Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. 
Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Psalm 29 is a beautiful psalm. It begins in the first two verses, ascribing glory to the Lord from all heavenly beings and all of us. And then we have the voice of the Lord speaking to us through nature, the temple of nature. And finally, uh, we are called upon to see God enthroned above it all. So here in the temple, the holy temple of God, let us read this psalm in unison. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes the Lebanon skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to work and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, the Lord, all the Lord. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Let us stand and hear the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from, or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? 
Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What did I say? In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I said it without flinching. Maybe even without deep thought. And we all heard the colic for today, Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and worship the unity. Shouldn't we all have fallen on our faces in God's presence? Like ancient Abram in the book of Genesis or the apostle John in the book of Revelation. Or shouldn't we have cried out as did Isaiah in our reading today saying, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. Well, welcome to Trinity Sunday. 
and what heartfelt 10 days we've experienced. Thursday, May 13th, Ascension Day, on the 40th day of Easter. And then three days later, Pentecost Sunday, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now, a week later, Trinity Sunday, Ascension Day, Jesus Christ has finally been glorified. And he has lifted this material world, all humanity, and especially the church, up into heavenly glory, where he continually and lovingly prays us through all our struggles. Pentecost, the fearful and doubting followers of Jesus are empowered by God's Spirit into bold declaration of salvation through the risen Christ. Their task then seemed impossible, as does ours today. But with God, through God's Spirit in them, and now in us, all things are possible. Today, Trinity Sunday, we are encouraged by a three-dimensional God, to put the mystery in human terms. And make no mistake about this being a masculine trinity. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are supragender, the deepest desires of womanhood and the breath of maternal care find a saw source and inspiration in God our mother and male belongings and the desire to protect are there in God, our Father. As witnesses to the faith, we are called upon to declare this highest of Christian mysteries to a digital world, conditioning everyone against Christian mysteries. Still, we must speak to our youth about this mystery of the Holy Trinity and to our children. Every, every once in a while, I hear of a child taken to the house of God who says to her mommy about a priest or perhaps myself, look, there's God. The white hair probably helps. We don't get upset at such notions in a child, but rather begin teaching them about Jesus in ways such as the catechesis of the Good Shepherd. We may answer childlike questions about the Trinity with images such as a three-leaf clover, or one bicycle built for three, or ice thrown into the fire becoming at the same time solid, liquid, and gaseous steam. So we, with childlike faith, accept this pinnacle of biblical mysteries, each in our own way. Our Jewish and Muslim friends have only a singular God. Think of it, the God who created heaven and earth and all that is, singularly alone forever and ever past eternity. God all alone? No, our God was eternally and ever shall be a community, a loving family of the Godhead, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Christians do not believe in three gods, but one God the Father who lovingly sent his Son Jesus into the world in the power of the Divine Spirit. So the Apostle Paul concludes the second epistle to the Corinthians, and liturgy bids us say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Now this is what we are celebrating today. A loving triune God has made us in godly image. The triunity of God has triadic effect on all creation and in our own personhoods. We are not only triadic body, soul, and spirit, but we are also called upon to love ourselves so that secondly, we can love others as ourselves. And thirdly, to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind. This and this only can produce the true beloved community 
for which the best in humankind longs. So Nicodemus asked Jesus, how can these things be? Jesus replies in this manner, if you are only born of this world with that strong lust for pleasures, possessions, and power where they all reign, you cannot see or know the truth of God's being and God's kingdom. But if you are born from above, you experience a whole new loving perspective on life. Now this is what I'd like us all to ponder this Trinity Sunday. This holy mystery calls us all together. We cannot do it alone. The Colic for Trinity Sunday collects or gathers us together to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and to worship the unity. I can't do that by myself. I need all of you in this place we call Christ Church. The first image of the bulletin Lori sent out took my breath away on the front of the bulletin. The glory, the majesty, the wounds, the loving arms of the Father. I'm thankful for Bill Cross providing these images week by week. And for the architecture and stained glass windows of Christ Church and for all its artists who display their art in the Preston Cutler Room. Here again is the triad, the mind and skills of the artist, the painting itself, and then those who absorb and reflect on the aspects of creative beauty that God provides the painter. Then there is also the music in our community of faith here. Our minister of music's tears of joys, as we finally began to sing in Christ Church last Sunday. I wonder how he will manage his first choir rehearsal. I'm so blessed by his selection of our weekly hymns. So we can't fall on our faces in contemplation of the Trinity, but we can now all sing, holy, holy, holy Lord, God almighty, in God's per three persons, blessed Trinity. And then we also sing glory be to God in the highest. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. We've just raised our voices. Come thou almighty King, come thou incarnate word, come holy comforter. And in the stanzas of our presentation hymn in a bit, Holy Father, Great Creator, Holy Jesus, Lord of Glory, Holy Spirit, Sanctifier, I need all this, as noted in the Collect, to acknowledge the Trinity and worship the unity. As we conduct a proper preface in the great grand thanksgiving, we will sing praise, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of peace and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. After our prayer of humble access, we will musically ask our Lord Jesus to be known to us in the breaking of the bread. During communion, we will hear John Rutter's, God be in my head. Our singing will conclude in praise immortal, invisible, God only wise. Before we hear the organ ring out box, we all believe in one true God. So Eo Gloria, glory to God alone, as John Russell always concludes. And there are other musicians at Christ Church who inspire me, and writers. We need all these in our times. But the doctrine of the Holy Trinity is not just for our comfort and inspiration. It is a call for action and service. That is why the haphazard award is so important here. Very few of us know all of our faith community's outreach. 
a list of what is going on from this church after the breaking of the bread is innumerable. A long list of our involvement in communities beyond us. We are participants in the extension of the Holy Trinity into all aspects of life and our world. And it is the way we love one another here, reach out to others outside, that may make sense to those unaccustomed to mysteries beyond science and consumer advertisements. Of course, our Heavenly Father grieves over the pretensions and violence of our world. Jesus, the Son, endured all the evil that affects our lives. Christ did so to redeem our struggles. And finally, the Holy Spirit has been sent to heal and in power, and to keep us together in faith and love. It is this majestic triune God we glorify today. We pause now to ponder its realities and possibilities these days in our lives. Standing, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, responding to each petition, hear us, blessed Trinity. Creator of the universe 
and all that dwells in the seas and skies and all creatures who inhabit the earth, help us to guard your holy treasures and to delight in all that you have made. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Word of truth, open our hearts to receive your message as it is revealed through Holy Scripture, the witness of your church, and in the minds and hearts of your faithful. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Spirit of life, strengthen us to reveal the fruits of the kingdom through the actions of our daily lives. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Architect of all that is seen and unseen, may we, re may we rebuild the world in peace mm. and give to each other the good gifts which you formed in creation. Let us pray. Hear us, Hear us blessed Trinity. Incarnate One, help us to offer your grace throughout the world, bringing people of every language, nation, and tribe into the baptismal waters of your saving love. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Wisdom from on high, descend upon your faithful people that our voices and actions may echo your hope for humanity. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Gathered on this holy Sabbath, day of rest and praise, joy and worship, we continue our prayers. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit bring you unto everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you.
peace to everyone here in the transept and in the nave, and peace to everyone that might be in the Preston Cutler room. Peace to everyone outside if you're a brave soul. And if you're worshiping with us online, peace to you. And wherever you happen to be, uh, please be seated. Well, uh, good morning and welcome to Christ Church. Uh, we continue uh, to move right along here uh, with uh, uh, some, new, uh, some new revelations for you. You may have came and you realized, hey, where's the yellow tape? Uh, I don't know where to sit. Well, well done. Uh, you're doing great, I can tell, um, but we're going to continue to sew, uh, masks on inside, masks optional outside. Uh, we're going to continue to social distance, and uh, so if you're in a pew, so that's you folks out there, um, don't sit in, directly in front of someone, don't sit directly behind someone, don't sit directly next to someone. So kind of like, you know, like your normal s sphere, like if someone's closer than three, three, three and a half feet to you, that's too close, right? So. Uh, just try and maintain that and continue to keep like a pew distance between you and, and the, the household uh, that's closest to you. So well done uh, for, for figuring that out. Um, the, the real big news is that um, our prepackaged communion wine has arrived. And so we're going to have communion in two kinds today. Um, and Becky and Penny are going to be our servers. And the way it's going to work is... Um, they're going to follow me, uh, one's going to, uh, Becky's going to follow me, uh, Penny's going to follow Dean, and they're going to have two baskets. One has your prepackaged communion wine in it, and it's got a little pull pop on it. So you're going to take one from this basket, pull back the pull top, drink it, and then you're going to put your, your empty in here. And then they move along just as we're moving along. And we think it, it worked at the 8 o'clock. It's going to take a little bit longer than it's typical. You know, we've been in one kind for so long, we're not used to drinking wine. So, you know, just be patient. Um, I'm going to start this way. You know, you folks over here on this side, you can sit down. You don't have to stand the whole time. So, you know, when we get close to you, you can stand up if, uh, if you want to receive. And, of course, you don't have to receive. Uh, well, you don't have to receive the bread either um, if you just want a blessing. But if you, if you don't want to receive uh, the, the prepackaged wine, that's fine too. But uh, we're... We're, we're doing our best with, with what we have to work with, and I was, I, was, I was glad that it arrived so we could have it here for Trinity Sunday. So um, that's the big news uh, with that. But then also, uh, you, the other big news is we have a bulletin now, too. We're back to bulletins. So these are all good things. And in fact, uh, you may have noticed the uh, books are back in the pews. That's good. Uh, and the kneelers uh, should be in the pews by next Sunday. Uh, we're just having them all... Uh, professionally cleaned uh, so that they're spick and span uh, and ready for kneeling uh, as of next Sunday. So those hopefully will be back in the chapel and here in the church by next Sunday. But in our bulletin, as it, as we always have done in the past, we also include the, the uh, prayers of the uh, prayers and intercessions of Thanksgiving, as well as the parish life notes. And one thing to note is that we're planning on having the women's retreat uh, this fall up in uh, uh, the, the Barbara C. Harris Camp and Conference Center. And uh, registration is now open. So details are there in your parish life notes. Uh, if you've gone, you know how great it is. And if you haven't gone, it's great. So you should go. Uh, so please, please sign up for that. Also, Garden Guild is back and starting this Tuesday at 5 p.m. So uh, we hope uh, you'll consider uh, coming and helping keep our grounds uh, looking great. Uh, we managed over the last year, but we missed the Garden Guild. So the Garden Guild will be a nice uh, uh, welcome Welcome back to the Garden Guild, and I'm sure the property will be happy to have the Garden Guild back as well. Um, after the 10 o'clock service, uh, we plan on having an uh, after-church refreshment time, uh, that kind of like what hobbits do, you know, they have elevensies, you know, so this is like our elevensies. Uh, so it's, it's after breakfast, but before lunch. Um, it'll be outside, weather permitting, and we're looking for hosts. So Joanna Klein is gonna be organizing that for us. And I should note, Joanna Klein is organizing it. She's not responsible for having it if no one signs up. So if no one signs up, we don't have 11 Uh But uh, we hope you'll help. And again, details are in the bulletin. We're continuing to have prepackaged stuff. So um, either store-bought prepackaged food, or if you, you, know, you make your own cookies or whatever, prepackage it ahead of time and then bring it to church. And we're going to have uh, for uh, drink available um, uh, single use, so you know, like cans of soda or juice boxes or bottles of water, those kinds of things. That's what that's how we're going to 
try and manage uh, not sharing things for the time being uh, during what we're calling after church refreshment hour. Uh, so I hope you'll sign up. And again, Joanna's uh, details are there in the bulletin. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons, and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.